What's up, YouTube? This is Slidey Eight Fry here. So uh, I think it's just a coincidence I'm wearing this shirt, but uh, earlier today, for the first time, I played a smartphone game uh, that I downloaded from the Google Play Store. I was actually uh, this is a phone I got recently as a result of my Motorola that I paid way too much for, honestly, for what it does at three hundred dollars. Um failed couldn't hold a charge anymore and wouldn't even turn on so I got this phone for 80 bucks and I like it just fine it's not a powerful phone but it does have the replaceable battery which is something I love oh yeah it's my wife by the way yay but anyways uh, I downloaded on this phone I was going to download uh, um, Hulu which I have but downloaded but they advertised Retro Bowl on it, and um, that game is a fun football game that has graphics like Tecmo Bowl for the NES, and uh, it's a lot of fun. You manage a, you manage a franchise, you coach a team, your players will actually gain experience points like an RPG. So I'm thinking of live streaming that game in the near future. That is, if this cheap phone can handle it, I don't know whether it can or cannot, but I'd like to give it a shot. Uh, anyways, that said, let's do this quick, let's do this react video. It's a new Scott the Waz video I am reacting to. Let's give it a watch. To delay a game. Hey all, Scott here. It is laundry season. I think everybody's cleaning the clothes these <laughs> days. Shit. I'm not one to go against trends. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> what happened okay. there? I did clean my pencils out with this, so it might not be ideal for the gears. Well, while I wait for that to heal up, why not tell a story to pass the time? What this the is the story of a brown haired white boy with glasses. Oh, okay. Guess who? Yeah, one you. One day, he decided to talk about video game delays. Uh huh. Want to hear some useless sh video yeah, games sure, are funny. <laughs> they take 12 years to develop and they stink. You ever announce a video game and its release date of yesterday when you only have like eight minutes of work done? Well, <laughs> you're a video game company. Looks like you need okay, a delay. Sure, a cold hard oh, fact every studio has to face at some point. Oh my god. Oh my god. Duke Nukem Forever is like the most famous one. I mean, didn't they start developing that in the 90s and it finally came out in 2010 and, it, and then it sucked? <laughs> Nothing kills the moon more than that for fans. That game's a famous one too, Russian I guess. That game just means the developers are going to be scrambling and the consumers are going to get garbage. It's yeah. almost always a good thing when a delay occurs, even if it stings a bit. But, mm, yeah. as somebody who watches the video game industry like a hawk, I can sense things. My five senses are at dangerous levels. You ever see me taste lemonade? <sighs> if you pay attention okay. enough, you can always tell when a delay is about to happen. If it just doesn't seem right, the game will come out that quick. It's impossible. Okay. Like, we've barely seen anything. Studios refuse to comment on the game's status. The development building burnt down. Something's fishy here. <laughs> now, there's <laughs> a difference between down. games that get delayed and games that languish in development hell. Development hell is more so games that just take forever to get made. Yeah. Well, games with numerous delays, I mean, they take kind of long, but come on, it isn't that bad. Take, for example, yeah. Mighty Number no. 9. Mm -hmm. No. This is mm -hmm. a game notorious for the amount of delays it experienced. Yeah, but when it's all was said and done, I mean, it only took roughly two and a half years to release from the initial announcement. The way most people talk about it implies it took forever to come out. Huh. Well, in dog years, yeah. No, what really annoyed <laughs> people years, about Mighty yeah. Number no. 9 was the amount of delays. See, they started a crowdfunding campaign for a spiritual successor to Mega Man and decided to offer players a whole country if the game got funded, plus a Wii U version. Due to okay. the sheer success of the campaign, they kept offering stretch goals. So if we reach this amount, we'll tuck you in, and if we reach this amount, we'll spit on your foot. That made the game more complicated <laughs> than necessary to develop. What once yeah. was a game that was supposed to release in April of 2015 became a game set to release in September 2015. It's and then February 2016. Oh. And then spring 2016. Oh. And finally June 21st, 2016, which is technically when summer begins, so it didn't even meet the spring deadline. You really couldn't have released it a day earlier? In the end, Mighty Number no. 9 was one of the <laughs> sloppiest looking games of the year. Not it wasn't living that up to long expectations delay and numerous delays kept others. raising. Well, I'm sure the delays made the game better. They were more <laughs> so indicative of a troubled development rather than wanting yeah. more time to make the title the best it could be. Exactly. I'd consider a game like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild to be delayed for the latter reason. It may have had trouble development, we don't know. Somebody might have pissed themselves at the office, but the numerous delays this game experienced felt more so because that was just what the project demanded. This it game is. did so much that required tons of research, testing, and yeah. it was no small game, so the extra delays made sense. This... 
honestly, if Breath of the Wild was never delayed, it would have started out as a Wii U exclusive because it was being developed for the Wii U. I don't remember how early, probably 2013, 2014, like pretty early in the Wii U's lifespan. Um, but it got delayed so much that it was the last official Nintendo game released on the Wii U and a launch title released on the Switch on the same day back in March 3rd, 2017 didn't. Breath of the Wild was first talked about in January of 2013, yeah, then shown for the first time in June of 2014, ending with the projected release year of 2015. It took long. Was that really necessary? That. Did you just have to say, oh yeah, it's coming next year? Wasn't the teaser enough? And they were pretty yeah. adamant this would release in 2015, even it affirming didn't. it during a gameplay demo in December 2014. <laughs> but then that brought us to March 2015. If you ever see Nintendo employees stand like this, f***ing run. To be fair, AJ <laughs> Newman stated here that while it was probably possible for the game to release in 2015, they just had so many new ideas they wanted to cram into the game and preferred just not focusing on trying to meet a 2015 release deadline. Yeah. The thing was, they never said it was delayed. They just were making a 2015 release their priority. Well, that means mm -hmm. there's still a chance, right? Well, yeah, but God hates Nintendo fans. So that seems okay. tricky. The entire year, we got nothing on the game until November 2015, where they said, yep, in 2016, it's coming. Nintendo, stop typing years. You're not good at it. So in 2016, we finally got substantial footage in the official. But God hates Nintendo fans. Makes it tricky. The entire year, we got nothing on the game until November article. 2015, where they said, yep, in 2016, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, NX was the. Um code name of the Switch when it was still in development. Yeah, I think if the Wii U was a success, it probably would have actually gotten the 2016 release for the Wii U. But because the Wii U flopped so bad, they decided to delay it and release it as a launch title for the Switch, but still kept their promise of releasing it for the Wii U as basically the last official Nintendo title on the Wii U. Nintendo, stop typing yours. You're not good at it. So in 2016, <laughs> we finally got substantial footage in the official title, and in January of 2017, we learned its official release date of March 3rd, 2017. So formally announced four years prior, roughly two delays. I mean, it's obvious these delays were to add tremendously to the game and not 100% due to poor planning or management. Sure, the delays right. hurt, but it didn't matter in the end. You weren't playing Breath of the Wild because I'm so glad this released in 2015. You were playing it because it was Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and that exactly. shows why delays are almost always good. Like, would this game be that much better if it released on January 26th compared to January 28th? When I'm planning to die on the 27th, yes. I think game <laughs> delays are a big talking point because it's obviously a little embarrassing for the game developers and publishers to go through that. Final Fantasy 15 had an entire event dedicated to celebrating it finally getting a release date of September 30th, 2016. Okay. Which made the delay to November that much funnier. But hey, that's only about two <laughs> months worth of a delay, which that amount of time, it's pretty crazy how much of a difference it can make. Two months in game development time is almost nothing. I think they noticed they misspelled final on the title screen and had to delay. But what if two fuck? months is really that big of a deal to you, you really need to reevaluate your priorities. Look who told yeah. you that. Don't get me wrong, some game delays can be stupid annoying, which is why I like to rate my game delays on the come the fuck on a meter. Rayman Legends, everybody loved Rayman Origins. Except for Shakers, I don't think they had a chance to play. A sequel okay. to one of the generation's defining 2D platformers was announced as an exclusive for the Wii U in 2012 That's and was right. set to be a launch title, though it got delayed to February 2013. So, one delay in, but it's no big deal. The Wii U launched with New Super Mario Bros. U. I'll wipe yeah. the throw up from my mouth, but you got a very capable 2D platformer at launch with that game already. That's true. I think February suited Rayman Legends a bit more. Come on, what else happened in February that year? The Pope resigned? A good time <laughs> to release Rayman. But truly before that release date, Ubisoft announced they were delaying Rayman Legends to September. September 2013 so they can make the game not a Wii U exclusive exactly. and rather release it on other consoles as well. Yeah, because the Wii U was oh, failing. The on! So Ubisoft decided <laughs> it wasn't a good idea to make Rayman Legends exclusive to the Wii U because their other exclusive Wii U title, Zombie U, underperformed. That's Listen, true. yeah, multi platforms way to go for these developers, I get it, but reconsidering if Rayman Legends, a family friendly 2D platformer, should be exclusive to the Wii U, mainly because an M rated first person survival horror game didn't do as well as you wanted, I feel is a little bit super fucking stupid. But then mm. Ubisoft Ubisoft acted like everybody loved when Rayman Legends was announced, but when all these fellas heard it was Wii U exclusive, man, the PlayStation and Xbox gamers, they were sad. We can't let them not have this game they probably don't care about. <laughs> well, the game was done in time for the original February release date. Ubisoft forced Wii U owners to wait seven months to play yeah, this game. That was so PlayStation annoying. 3 and Xbox 360 owners could play it at the same time. Yeah, so that, that wouldn't really be so annoying. bad 
if Ubisoft didn't constantly release games during that era that came out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, but not the Wii U. Oh, so mm-hmm. when PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 owners are disappointed that a Wii U game is only coming out for the Wii U, well, let's rip it away from Wii U fans and give them what they want. When Wii U owners are disappointed <laughs> a PS3 and 360 game isn't coming out for Wii U, well, what did they expect? They bought the Wii U. They ended up releasing the game on September 3rd, 2013 for PC, PS3, Xbox 360, PlayStation Vita, and Wii U. You had to delay yeah. the game so you don't release it on a failed console to release it on two failed consoles. Yeah, it didn't Vita, do yeah. that well at launch, and honestly, it makes total sense. Wii U owners were ready for Rayman Legends in February. I mean, there was nothing else to play in the first half of 2013. I think a good chunk of early adopters of the console would have jumped on it if it released in February. When you release it in September, Perhaps. all these games were coming out not only for all platforms, but on Wii U, we had Pikmin 3, Wonderful 101, Wind Waker HD, Wii Party U, Rayman Legends could have had a few months all to itself, and I guarantee you it would have garnered more attention. Instead, Maybe. it sort of got lost in the shuffle because they delayed it, which in my opinion is one of the few examples of delay sort of backfiring. I don't huh. think it entirely did. The game was great, it just released at a busy time. I would have recommended yeah, releasing the Wii U happened. version on time in February than releasing the other platform versions at a later date. I there was speculation that, that Ubisoft actually. couldn't do that because Microsoft had a policy where multi-platform games Games have to release the same day or earlier on Xbox platforms, or just straight up can't release on Xbox at all. I don't know. I've seen numerous examples <laughs> of that not occurring. I don't really know why Rayman Legends would have been treated differently like that. I think it's ready. Okay. We're going to test it out by cleaning some forks. There are some studios that almost <laughs> always delay their games. If a release date seems too good to be true, it statement. is. Rockstar originally revealed that Red Dead Redemption 2 was coming in holiday 2017, and then first half of 2018. It released in October. Grand Theft Auto 5 was delayed. Grand Theft Auto 4 was. The original Red Dead Redemption was. You'd think they learned not to set a date, but it's was almost a tradition. Hey, was Red Dead Revolver delayed? That's the original Red Dead game, Red Dead Revolver. And that certain studios and franchises delay their games, like with Zelda. It's almost like every single home console major 3D Zelda title has been delayed in some way, shape, or form. And then there's Spore, but it's almost a tradition that certain studios and franchises delay their game. Or was the original Red Dead Redemption was. You'd think they learned not to set a date, but it's almost a tradition that certain studios and franchises delay their games, like with <laughs> Zelda. It's almost like every single home console major 3D Zelda title has been delayed in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, and then there's Spore. Don't be like Spore. Delays can infinitely raise expectations. If the developers have so much more time, this better be the best game it could possibly be. Yeah. I now have nothing to do in 2007, Spore. I think that's what happened <laughs> with Mighty Number no. 9. I mean, all those delays and this is what we got? Crowdfunded yeah. indie games have it rough in this department. They almost always get the release dates pushed because there's only like, what, four people working on them? Mm-hmm. But because they're crowdfunded, because they receive donations ahead of time, there are loads of people that expect the world from these games. Yeah, that's I'm sure true. Shovel Knight received over $300,000 and was delayed a few times and came out phenomenal, but $300,000 isn't a lot for a game. It's insane they were able to make it on that budget. So yeah. for people to look at Kickstarter games as if they're expected to live up to being delayed numerous times, I don't know. I mean, we know what the budget is ahead of time. If anything, that should set your expectations better. But no, these games are often scrutinized the most for delays. But when Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered took two years to come out, not as many people bitched. I found that to hmm. be pitiful. This is a remaster of a GameCube game announced in September 2018 that was set to be released a year later. That's already sort of pathetic, but it got delayed past January 2020 and finally released in August of 2020 and was dog shit. But of course, my favorite game delay is is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It was okay. announced for November 2013, it got quietly delayed to December 2013, and then Nintendo said they needed more development time, so they delayed it to February 2014, and the developer said, we don't know what they're talking about, the game's done. It was obviously <laughs> pushed because, kind of like with Rayman Legends, having Donkey Kong in February gave it time to breathe and be the only talk of the town. I remember people huh. acting like Nintendo really f***ed up again because Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was coming out in February. Really? You really thought Nintendo was doomed because you couldn't play Donkey Kong in December? Did you really think that was gonna push the Wii U over the edge with the new PlayStation and Xbox launching around the same time? Yeah, this might yeah, have need for speed, point, but actually. But the Wii U has a Donkey Kong game coming out in December. Any other month, I wouldn't give a fuck. I do believe many <laughs> overreact to delays. I think it's more than fair to be disappointed, but there's obviously more good that comes from delays most of the time. Usually, yeah. Even when nearly all the examples I gave fucking stunk. But come mm. on, I mean, ooh, Persona 5 was delayed a bunch. Doom Eternal, wasn't that supposed to come out in November? Duke Nukem Forever, I'll shut up. Ooh. Video games require more work than nearly any other form of entertainment, and more problems pop up randomly. Bugs, glitches, design flaws, new ideas are too easy to not throw into a game midway through development, so developers are like, let's add this. Though it'll increase <laughs> the development time as a whole by a lot, 
That doesn't happen nearly as much with any other medium. It just makes sense that games get delayed. They're too complicated to not get delayed. <laughs> yeah, the idea that you now have to wait another month or two to play a game you really want to play, it's kind of lame, Are but like that gives us more time to play all the other games on? that released 30 years ago. Cyberpunk got delayed, I still have yet to play Dino Ricky. I think okay. while many artists <laughs> strive under having a deadline, having too strict of a deadline can obviously negatively affect the end product. Most games can release at any point in time and they'll be fine. Of course, games like Pokemon will have to come out at a certain time because of all this other merchandise and media tie-ins releasing to coincide with it. And that yeah, makes delays hard true. to do, but if you even have to entertain the idea of one, it's probably in your best interest to do it. Because Family Feud on Nintendo Switch really needed it, did you really have to release it when you did it? This is horrible. Well, after numerous <laughs> delays, I've decided to cancel the laundry, but don't you worry. I think everything will work out just fine for our brown-haired white friend. Game delays are inevitable for all developers, and most of the time, I think they're highly respectable. <laughs> it takes guts to admit, hey, we need more time. And sure, some are annoying, most are definitely disappointing. But in the end, I think most delays are for the best. It's not like real life where pushing something off till later will get you in deep trouble. Oops. Huh. Hey all, Scott here. It is laundry season. Seems like everybody's cleaning the clothes these days. <laughs> Back to the beginning of the video. <laughs> All right. Um, God damn it. I hate doing this without the mouse. Well, anyways, that was a blast to watch once again. Scott the Waz, comedic genius as he always is. Um, yeah, I could name a few examples where delays were probably for the best. Um, at least I think I could name them. Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii back in 2008. That game was expected to be released um, sooner. Like, it was... Uh, I remember the, the first preview I seen of that game was actually uh, a, a video I saw on IGN back in 2005. And this was before the Wii even came out in 2006. But yeah, they, they showed a really interesting introduction to that game on there. And uh, I, I think it was expected to initially be released like in 2007 or something, but then it got delayed until 2008. And it was expected to be released here in the U.S. Uh, like in January or something, but it was delayed to March and, you know, March 9th. And that was fine. Um, it, it, I, I think it worked out. And not, not to mention uh, the delays were uh, did allow some additional fighters like Sonic, who uh, it has been my main in Super Smash Bros. since Brawl. Um, for whatever reason, he just came naturally to me in Brawl, despite being kind of low to mid to low mid tier in Brawl. He, he's really high. He's like top tier in Smash 4 and in Ultimate. He's also pretty good. But anyways, um, StarCraft 2, I think, is a pretty good example. I remember the first footage I saw of StarCraft 2 was on some video I saw on YouTube all the way back in 2006. Uh, that game, it felt like was never going to come out, like ever. They, they were mostly showing pr new Protoss units in 2006, then like sometime in 2008, I think. They started showing the uh, Terran units, and it was a really awesome showcase of Terran stuff. Um, and then in like sometime in 2009, they sh did a smaller showcase of new Zerg stuff. Finally, in... In like mid, like I think it was summer 2010 was when StarCraft 2 finally came out and it turned out to be an incredible game with an incredible campaign so much fun to play the game online and there was a beta version of the game before it which was a lot of fun as well uh, there's actually a couple things from the beta version I wish they'd kept in the final game though like uh, when you have uh, multiple t Ter like multiple Terran buildings, like multiple Terran barracks and factories set on the same group. Um, have it so that you select the ones that have the reactor core, uh, um, or the uh, and the ones that have the uh, the other add-on, uh, the the tech lab add-on, be se selected separately. That's how it was in the previous game, so it was easier to actually switch between them instead of accidentally building from the wrong one. 
Um, but other than that, you know, it, the delays were good, and the game was really good, of course. I mean, uh, people are disappointed in the later StarCraft II games, Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void, but Wings of Liberty, I thought, turned out quite well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell icon to add me notifications. This actually went on longer than I expected. Uh, and also, check out my playlist of Scott DeWaz Reacts as well. Thank you so much.